All right, Black Hole Sun, won't you come? A little reference to Soundgarden there, 1994, the song. But this is not about the song. This is about the Schwarzschild radius and how it's related to black holes. So let's get our pen ready here. So I'm going to give you, and we'll use green, we'll use green, a very, very simple definition of the Schwarzschild radius. So it's saying that what must the radius be of an object if it collapses? So imagine this, for example. Let's say we took the Earth and we shrunk it down to the size of a, of a um, gumball. If you packed all that mass, all that gravity into a gumball, it would be a black hole. In fact, actually with the Earth, it would be smaller than a, than a, than a gumball. So if I do a two-dimensional representation of this black hole, just make a circle, right? I'm trying to make a circle. And the radius, you know, the radius is half the diameter. What does this radius have to be when it shrinks down in order for it to become a black hole? So in our galaxy, right over here, we have a, uh, we have a name for our black hole, right? Every major galaxy has a black hole. Ours is Sagittarius. Sagittarius A. And it's a black hole. And Sagittarius A is 12 million kilometers in its radius, not its diameter, 12 million kilometers, much bigger than the sun. Our sun has a radius of 432,450 miles. So 12 million kilometers is about, about 7 million miles, a little over 7 million miles. So you know Sagittarius A is much bigger than our sun. Our sun will never become a black hole. Just does, It's not massive enough. But if it did collapse, what must its radius be? And that's what we'll find out with the Schwarzschild radius. And we'll also think about the Earth also. So let's clear this out. Let's get a clean page. And let's write the equation. So what must the radius of the sun be? for it to become a black hole. And just remember, it never will become a black hole. So here it is, two-dimensional. Here's the Schwarzschild radius, and this is the event horizon. Get our pen going over here. So the event horizon is the point of no return, right? Nothing can escape a black hole. Nothing escapes a black hole. And, and light doesn't escape, right? And the reason is, is a black hole's escape velocity its escape velocity, the black hole's, write this down here, the black hole's escape velocity is greater than the speed of light. We'll use C for the speed of light. So C equals the speed of light. Now for this, we're going to round the speed of light. We'll use kilometers, but it's, it's roughly about 300,000 kilometers per second. If you think about it in feet, it's 186,000, well, not feet, but miles, miles per second. Just think about it. When you snap your fingers, light can go around the world seven times. That's how fast it is. But the escape velocity, the speed you need to escape an object, like a black hole, it's greater than the speed of light. And since nothing can go the speed of light, nothing can escape the black hole and again the event the event horizon right over here this is the area this is the edge where if you reach the event horizon you cannot escape so let's write down the formula here using green the radius what must the radius of the sun be and again let me just say this the sun will, will not become a black hole it's just not massive enough will not become a supernova. It's just not massive enough. It will expand, though. It'll become a red giant, and then finally it will shrink down to a white dwarf. The radius here, what should it be? This is the equation, right? So it's going to be 2 times g, and I'll explain g in a minute, times its mass over speed of light squared. That's the equation. So let's just take the sun. So what should the radius be? We're gonna first of all we need to know what g means. What is g? Put it over here, g. Now you might also see a lowercase g. So we'll talk about those two. So g is the universal 
gravitational constant. It's the universal gravitational constant. And I'm going to give you that number in a minute. We're in the small g when you learned in middle school science and high school science and your early science classes. It's the acceleration. It means all Newtonian physics due to gravity on Earth. And it could be different on whatever planet you're on. You're on. So g is 9.81 for dealing with small g, but an uppercase g, I'll give the number over here, a little arrow over here. So it is, and you don't have to memorize this, but it's 6.67428 times 10 to the negative 11th. It's a big number to, to memorize, right? That is g. So you might see this if you see some physics equations out there. So if I want to know what the radius of the sun would have to be for it to become a black hole, we're going to say the radius equals 2 times 6 point, and we'll just round this, let's just say 6.67 right now using scientific notation, which you learned probably within in eighth grade, times the mass and all over speed of light squared. Okay, now we need to know what the mass of the sun is. If we don't know the mass of the sun, we can't, we can't solve this. I'll put the mass over here. The well, mass of the sun is about 1.99 times 10 to the 30th power. That's the sun. If you want to know the mass of Earth, which we'll do in a minute, it's 5.97 about times 10 to the 24th power. That's the mass of the sun. That's the mass of the Earth. So we can use those two, plug this into the equation, and we can find out what the radius of the Earth must be if we shrunk it down, and also the sun. Let's do the sun first. So we'll make a box. We'll make a box over here. Change the color so it's not too confusing. So if you took the mass of the sun, you took this mass and you plugged it in here, and don't forget the speed of light squared. It's 300. Well, it's, we it's a, not exactly 300,000, but we'll just do 300,000 kilometers per second. 300,000 kilometers per second. And if you plug that in, what would you get? What do you think that the sun's radius would have to be? So if you did that, if you shrunk it, don't forget, it's 300,000 kilometers squared, uh, C squared, right? So if you did that, the sun's radius would be 2.5 kilometers. Very insignificant. Now, if you think about Sagittarius A in our solar system, remember I said that it's... Its radius is 12 million kilometers, 12 million kilometers. And what about this Earth now? If we plugged in the Earth's mass, what would you get? What would be the radius of the Earth? You want to pause the tape, see what you get? So again, I said earlier in the video that if we took the entire Earth and squeezed it down, kept all its mass, and we put it to the size of a gumball, we wouldn't even get the radius that it would come out to with the equation. It would be less than that. It will be about 9 millimeters, which is smaller than a gumball, right? A gumball is about maybe 24 millimeters, right? So very small if we pack the Earth in. So that's what the Schwarzschild radius does. It calculates again what is the radius needed for an object to become a black hole in very simple terms. And by the way, this is TON-618. It's the largest black hole we detected so far. It's enormous TON-618. Much, much, much bigger than the Sun. Much, much bigger than Sagittarius A. So again, if you don't re reach the uh, Sag um, Schwarzschild radius, if you don't reach it when a collapsing star, then light can escape. So that's our video today.